everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Jean Inspired Show. And as usual, I'm Jean and I'll be your host. We mostly bring to you stories of startups in the country. But how do you know you are making it right if you haven't seen a math watering ice cake before? So, on today's episode, we'll be talking with a legend, a world acclaimed musician in the person of Nana. Let's meet our guest after this break. Welcome from the short commercial break. Today I'll be having a sit down with a world acclaimed musician, a legend, someone who has, should I say 2K, been in the industry for 20 years, it's not easy. Welcome to the studio, Nana Ochre. We are probably known as Tech. Thank you, thank you so much. And you're looking awesome. Thank you, thank you. And so how is business? Yeah, business is good, you know. Um, hard work, day in, day out, you know. Okay. And I mean, mostly know you as a musician, mm. from TikTok to tech. Mm. But we, we don't know this aspect of you, Gen X Pizza. Mm. How did it start? Well, um, it all started from, um, you know, like just doing music. And then um, at a point, you know, thinking, you know, you need to have other things, you know, that can keep you going. You know, and um, my fiancée loves food. You know, she always says that she she, she had a dream that she's supposed to have uh, like a restaurant. So like, you know, we we always used to say, oh, we're gonna own a restaurant one day. We're gonna have a restaurant. So that was how it all started. You know, and we started off with um, uh, Alf and Gina. You know, and so uh, we thought let's spread it, you know, across Ghana and take it to the other regions as well. And then, um, you know, when I, I also had a nightclub and what we used to do was take like chicken hot wings, you know, uh, give it to our fans in the, in the club, you know, uh, around let's say 2 p.m. at dawn. You know, and then we just bring surprise chicken wings, you know, it goes through the whole club and everybody just takes a piece. And then we also take slices of pizza and all that. So uh, people loved it and it was all made by my fiance. <laughs> so people loved it. So we decided to also, um, yeah, get into the food business. So how long have you been in this business? Let me say four years, you know, yeah, it started off from a small uh, joint, you know, at the uh, Apprati Junction, okay. like I told you, yeah. um, and um, of course we had the, the first branch in, a, at, uh, in Accra, at Kotoka International Airport, yes, that's where it started from, and then we thought of breaking out from, you know, the, the city and taking it to the, you know, um, other regions. And then, um, so when we got to like Kumasi, for instance, we started off in, at an uh, engine filling station, and um, it was it was like a small place. But then we knew that whatever we wanted to do was something not just ordinary, but you know something that we thought we had to grow with it. So we, we had to do it properly. Now, now you you being an icon, a mentor to many of us. What, how, what would you say motivated you to get this business private? Um, <laughs> what motivated me basically is for people to eat healthy, you know. Um, I realized that people are not eating healthy. I mean, they're buying the food, but I mean, it's just about the taste. And um, I was thinking, can we, have a, can we have some food that is healthy, that has value for money? So not just um, eating, but buying food, healthy food. And so we thought, let's get Gen X Pizza, let's give people healthy food, and let's give them value for money. So, I mean, that's, that's what motivated me to, to have this um, so Would you business. agree with me if I say Gen X Pizza is thriving because of your status as a celebrity in Ghana? I wouldn't say so. I think it's all boils down to hard work. 
I think if you don't work hard, I mean, nothing is possible, you know, but if you work hard, everything is possible. Uh, for me, I, I believe that you dedicate yourself to something and you have to make sure you see it to the end, you know, so if you start something and you're not dedicated to it, then obviously you're going to have, you know, challenges and you're going to give up. But if you're dedicated and you believe in it, then, you know, you will not have any problem. So we talk about branding. A lot of startups out there are battling with it. So what would you say to them? How would you encourage them to go about it? Yeah, like everything you do, you, you think about where you want to take it, how you want people to see it, you know, in the upcoming years. I mean, I, I have been in the music industry for over 25 years and I started at nine years old. And along the line, um, you would have to reassess the brand and regroup and um, think of how you want people to see you in the next generation since you, you, you are not going to stop singing, you know. So it's the same. I mean, if you're doing anything, you have to think about the future. You also have to think about how people are going to see you because what you sell is what people buy. I mean, you, how you want people to see you or how you want people to uh, have the perception you want people to have for your thing is, is, is what you do. So for me, I always look, about, I always look at the future, you know, and, and what I sell is what people should believe in. So I always make sure that what I'm selling has something different uh, has a niche that people can just say wow this is different this is different you know we like this you know so I'll just say that believe in what you do and have something special about you you know that will always bring that person to your place you know or something like that you know and once you do that you'll be carving a niche for yourself so of, of course you'll be having a good brand so from tic to tic <laughs> yeah from tic tac to tic yeah how do they happen yeah, from Tic Tac to Tic because Tic Tac has been around for like, let's say 20, 25 years. And, you know, on, you know, mostly people call me Tic, you know, I mean, they know me as Tic Tac, but when they're trying to call me, they, they like to call me Tic, you know, so I thought, you know what, let me make it easy for everybody, you know, like, it's been 25 years already, you know, let's put some vibe to the name, let's let's you know let's let's upgrade it you know like for me it's it's just adding some vibe to the name and then putting some new you know some new whole spice to the whole the whole brand you know and taking it to the next level for the next future generation you know so yes it's take that graduated to take you know because people call me take anyway <laughs> so from what you say it means the tic tac we knew in Philomena is different from the tech we know in Panama. Oh yes, I mean 1995, 1999 is not 2018. You know, that's like, that's like, that's like two decades already, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. So, of course, um, of course, I'm not gonna be the same. You know, you are gonna get the same uh, product with a bit of value. You know, more value because I try to add more value to it. But I mean. Of course, it's, it's, it's not the same. It's an improved version of what you had before. Okay. So, Tech, so how do you go about your location? We're looking at all your branches in Kumasi. Seems they are very visible. Mm. So, how do you go about it? They are visible like me. <laughs> you know, um, choosing a spot for business, you always have to think about the location, of course. And you have to think about the people. I thought this is a new place. I, I thought it was... It's, it's a place that has different people growing up, you know, like, and it's a place that has people who lived in town in Kumase moving, you know, like trying to find their own place, trying to find a peaceful place. And when they come home, you don't expect them going back to town to get the same thing that they get in town. So I'm thinking, taking it to them, they will appreciate it better. And taking it to them and also adding value to it will make them appreciate it. So I think about the location and also think about people who are traveling, you know, so the people who want to take it as a rest stop will do that. People who also want to enjoy the place just because, you know, they feel it's closer to them can also do that because there's everything down in the city. And for me, it's like, it's, it's, it's too packed up, yeah. right? 
Now, now starting your business, starting as a musician from childhood, how do you get the capital? Capital has always been a problem. You know, like, you know, I am from the era that when we started doing rap music, local rap music was not popular in Ghana, you know? Mm -hmm. So people didn't believe in it. People only believed in hard life, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine um, we saying that we want to do rap. That was crazy. But, like, it comes back to the belief again and how to convince people to spend on you. And that was crazy. I mean, I did that by going to, you know, this guy called Abraham Ohenejan. And I used to go to him every day. And I used to tell him how good I am. And I used to rap for him. And I used to always go to his, 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 his company. And I always used to tell him, look, I'm going to make you money. Just record me and that. And I was, I was convinced. You know, as young as I was, I was just convincing him all, all day. Like, I will close from school. The first place I go, instead of going home, is his office, you know, and I go and I, I try to vibe him and, you know, I used to vibe people from when I was young, you know, and so one day he said, okay, you know, we're going to give it a try, but you need to wrap up school, you know, so okay. I said, okay, good, great, and, you know, I, I was lucky, I, I was with um, the Nazi Strangers group, okay. and we used to yeah. perform at Fan World, Keda Fest. So we had a buzz, but it wasn't a professional buzz. It was like startup buzz, you know. Mm -hmm. And at school, we were like, yeah, the, you know, the celebrities at yeah. school and all that. So we had some, some kind of, a, you know, startup. But the tick as a brand needed to stand on its own. Yeah. So, I mean, he said, finish schooling. And when you complete school, I'm going to put you on a, on a deal. And so whilst I was schooling, I was recording. And whilst I was schooling, I was performing. So this whole thing came together like when I was in, um, let's say, my final year. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, okay, you know what? You're in your final year. Let's wrap up the album. Okay. Let's sign a professional contract. And I had 30%. <laughs> and you, you they had 70%. Then. No, but you get it. You, like, you were young then. I was young, but I mean, still, that was like a big cheat, you know? <laughs> but it was good for me. Yeah. For me... All I wanted to do was to put that record out to show people what I can do, you know. So that means your parents were supportive. Yes, that's that's one big thing. When I did, um, you know, I did the first record with Azigiza, mm -hmm. and Azigiza at that time was the biggest DJ in Africa. Yeah. So that was a big, big boost, you know. And I, I, I didn't just jump on his, his record. I jumped on his record because I won a rap competition. So, you know, it, it was always me trying to do something above what I could do, my limits. So I won that rap competition at Keda Fest. I was the best rapper. And then he said he was going to feature whoever does the best rapper. So then I became the best rapper. And then he featured me, and that was a big song. And then I did Slim Basta, and it was a big song. So I was in the circles. And then Abraham took me up and, like, let me do it with you. So that's how it was. So the finance, sorry. Okay. So the finance came from Abraham. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So what, what would you tell parents who are watching this show about supporting their kids? Yeah, you know, like most parents in Ghana from when I started had that notion that, you know, if you're going to be a musician or I don't know, you, you're talking about talent, but there are different type of talents. Yeah. For my talent, it was like, you're going to be a drug addict, you're going to be blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So it was more like, it's a no-go area. Mm -hmm. So I had to really convince my mom and my dad. I mean, I told them I'll always be that kid they want me to be, you know, they should just give me the opportunity and I, I'm going to make them proud. You I know? even read somewhere that your son, um, Kangaroo, your, your dad gave you the inspiration. Yeah, my dad gave me Kangaroo because... I mean, at that time, I was going through difficult times, like, you know, when you're in the industry and you're, you're trying to do your thing, going up, there's a lot of pulling down syndrome. Sometimes you say things people don't understand, they misinterpret, and it becomes hate in the industry, you know? And you go places and you feel hate, you know, you feel big hate. And you try to be yourself and people just hate you for being yourself, and it's crazy. You know, so I explained to my dad that I was going through that situation, that phase that 
I thought the whole country was coming down on me, you know, like, and he said, no, you're the son of a kangaroo, you know, mm -hmm. let me get you this lyrics. So one day I was in my room and he had come to visit mm -hmm. and then he said, yo, I brought you the lyrics, you know, I said, wow. let me, let me have a look at it. And I saw you're the son of a kangaroo, no matter how high you go, you will never fall. Because he said kangaroo was a special animal, he has a pouch and when he put the young one in there, no matter how high it jumps, it never falls, you know. So I was thinking, that's, that's, that's crazy. So, you know, I put it into writing, I put it into music, and then we had that song. You know, that song was number one on MTV, and um, it was number one on the chat, and Africa and everything. So, and it was directed by Gil Green. You know, so that was the highest I could ever think of having a video director, you know, an international video director coming all the way from LA, you know, who done videos for Lil Wayne, 50 Cent, and everybody directing my video. I'm like, whoa, you know. So that was like big, big song. So that's when I knew that, yo, pops got vibe, you know. <laughs> so it's like a lot of people, they when they we talk about celebrities, they assume you are. The, those glamorous people we see on set, you don't go through anything. But we really know that behind every successful mm. man, the person has gone through several mm. failures, several right. challenges before he or she rose to that level. So what has been some of the things you, you, you've been through since childhood to get to uh, I've life? been through a lot. I've been through a lot. I mean, you can imagine in our country, it's, it's not easy, you know? I mean, trying to, one come up with what you believe in everybody thinks you should have one way syndrome you know and so i had challenges from trying to be me so trying to be me was a that was the biggest challenge you know how do you overcome it and how how i overcame it it yeah. was just being me <laughs> i know you are trying to confuse my viewers no i'm not confusing your viewers what i'm telling your viewers is that you try to be yourself no matter what people say about you. Okay. You know, that can help you to overcome whatever challenge. Because if you stop being yourself and you be what they want you to be, then you're not going to find an antidote when you're in a situation. Because they are not thinking for you. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. When you're in a situation, you're in it alone. You can share with people. People can advise you. But you feel it because you are in that situation. So you can pick from people, but it's up to you and how strong you can be to overcome the challenge. So if it is a personal challenge, if it is a if if it is an addiction, mm -hmm. if it is if it is a um, financial situation, then you also have to speak to others. Mm -hmm. So mine was everything in all. How people saw me, how people described me. Some say I, I'm not friendly. Some say I was disrespectful for some reason I didn't understand. I mean, some also said that, you know, I was on drugs, you know, for some reason, you know, you? best known for them or to them. And then some also said that, you know, I would take whatever I want when I need it, you know. And for that reason, you know, I'm not a good guy. <laughs> I thought it's what you said. You said some said you were on drugs. Yeah, some said. Oh, every Ghanaian were you, artist were you, were you on drugs? Every Ghanaian artist is on drugs. I mean, that's the whole perception, right? Once you've picked the mic to sing, you've got so much energy, you're burning so much energy because the crowd is giving you the energy and you're charged up. They say you're on drugs. <laughs> is that the energy you get from doing what you love? That's what I'm saying, but I mean, it's crazy, but that's, that's a, they, people will say, oh, that guy, man, he's on serious cocaine, you know? <laughs> and I'll look at it, I'll be like, whoa, this is crazy, you know, like... So talking about that, like how would you advise startups to monetize their passion? Um, I would just say, you know what, look, me, there's one thing I always say. When I was in school and I, I wanted to sing and I wanted to do things, my friends or my peers would be like, oh, you're saying things that you cannot achieve. And then they will laugh at me, you know, like they will really laugh at me. And do you know what I did? I stopped working with those friends and I started working with the girls. Wow. <laughs> so, because my ambitions were higher, like my vision, like when I, when I share my vision, they were thinking, they weren't thinking like me. So mm -hmm. they were always feeling like, ah, this guy, he's always saying things that he can't do. You know, he's too known. You know, Ghana, you, yeah. you're too known. 
And then I was thinking, ah, this is how I feel. I think I can do it. I need that support. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, so when I'm coming, they'll be like, oh, that's him coming. He's always talking big, but he can't do it, you know? But so I felt, I felt let down, you know? So I decided, you know what? I'm not going to go close to them anymore. And then when I go to the girls and I'm chatting to them, look, I want to be at this, I want to do that. They'll be like, yeah, hey, 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 hey you know? that support. And they'll be like, hey, hey, you know? So I said, you know, let me hang out with these girls for the meantime, you know? So I, was, I used to hang out with the girls a lot, you know? Even at, at, at break time, we'll go and eat together, you know, I'm with the girls, you know? So, because they gave me that opportunity, you know, to breed success. Mm. So I would say that, if you want to become somebody, believe in yourself. I mean, that's, that's the main thing. And you, you need to also share sometimes, you know, and take what people feel about it. But in the end, it's up to you to direct it, to believe in what you want to do. So people can always tell you they are mine, but that doesn't really mean that is the honest truth or that is going to affect what you're doing. You understand? Yeah. Because people have always told me, no, this won't work. And I'm like, I feel it to work. Mm -hmm. And I've done it and pressed it and it has worked. So that's so sometimes I'm confused when they say, uh, you know, like you're doing something and people are sharing with you. And sometimes you're like, oh, you don't listen. You don't listen. And most of the times, 90% of the things that I've done that I've listened to people, but I've, I have, I have, gone it i've done it my way you know with a little bit of advice at work than the ones that i listen to people and try to do what they are saying i have always failed okay so tech considering your business your genetics pizza and your music career would you say you are afraid of competition no no not at all i i try to be me i think it, from the beginning of the conversation i said you have to be unique yes Competition will always be there for you if you're doing something good. Then other people will also try to do what you're doing and try to better what you're doing. So you don't stop, you know, brainstorming. You don't stop adding value to what you do. So competition will always be a part of you if you, are, you're, 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 you want to achieve excellence. You know, it will always not be you. It will be you and others. Now, how do you be better than others? That's your challenge. That's your, your part of the challenge. So I have, I have never been afraid of competitions. I have won awards mm -hmm. that I, I was in competitions with others and I have won. I mean, we've done rap competitions that I have won, you know, so there will always be competition. But how, how extra are you willing to go to be that person that has that different thing, you know, to, to, to be the final winner is what you do. So, I am not afraid of competition at all. Okay. A great entrepreneur once said you should put all your eggs in one basket. A great entrepreneur yes. once said you should put all your, all eggs, your eggs in one in basket. One basket. So I, that when there is profit, when you the, get you have it. Yes. <laughs> uh, is that an old saying or is it a new, new saying? It's an old saying. It's an old saying. Maybe it's old now, you know. To me, that's old. Um, I think what he, what the person tried to mean or uh, was you have to put in your all, you know, like to see it grow one time, uh, 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 you know, after the other. Like if if I wanted to be a musician, I would make sure I'm always practicing because mm -hmm. I did. I would just buy a bottle of water and I'll be in the room. I'll press play, you know, I'll press the cassette, boom, and I'll get the beat and I'll be rapping, rapping, and they'll be calling me, come and eat, and I don't go and eat. I'm putting my energy into that thing and once it's successful i can also impact you know on others and then pick up a new challenge so maybe that's what the saying means but the saying does not mean that i mean maybe you should just do that forever but it can also mean that you do something and you have to see it through so that it grows you know so it's, it doesn't really mean doing one thing but it's like doing it and making sure you do it well and you achieve like looking back at where you were when you started, did you ever think you were going to fail? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were there were times that I'll be doing it and I I felt I was going to fail because everybody was saying <laughs> the opposite of what I was doing. Look, like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? 
why are you doing it this way? Why are you doing it? Everybody is doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. So then I felt, whoa, I'm going to fail because I feel everybody is doing what they're saying. So maybe I will not have a space, you know? Yeah. But I will be there and I'll be thinking about it and I'll be like, no, no, no. I just don't want to be like everybody, you know, or anybody. So, yes, sometimes you feel like that. I felt that, but you still have to give it a shot. Like, you still have to continue. When it becomes difficult, that is when you have to stand firm. It's not easy, you know. Like, it's crazy when somebody tells you that you think, oh, it's like a joke. But you really have to stand firm if you believe in what you're doing. So, you sometimes you fail. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, oh, I have failed. You know, like, <laughs> but the thing is, you, you, you get up and you regroup. You know, and, and you, you, you use another direction towards the same destination. You know? And then you see it, it, it works. Okay, so, so what's your foundation as an entrepreneur? My foundation? I, I don't really get it like. See, every building has a foundation. I know. And the strength of the building depends on it. So what's that one thing? I think I'm a believer, so I, I pray a lot. I believe that I didn't... Um, coming to planet earth by my my, my power mm -hmm. so i believe i believe that there is jehovah god i believe that he created the heaven and earth and he created me gave me the air that i breathe so i would say jehovah god is is my foundation jehovah god is my foundation me how has it affected your life you are talking to me today you know and it's jehovah god is by my creator's power that you are talking to me so i would I, it's, it has affected my life i mean that's why we are sitting in front of cameras you know so i think that that alone should answer your question <laughs> okay let's go for a quick commercial break we'll be back to wrap things up Another guilty beat. A chip, 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 Maybe one see the PK, I go na yana get the bend, I want you to walk on. Yeah, the yama fini be fi one hole. On the nam ni win him so one swing tick tack PK. Maybe one see the PK, I go na yana get the bend, I want you to walk on. Ah, Joe be the diva, it's a body by ya. The yana yere, banana ya shase. Who? Yeh ni abo, yeh ni abo. Ah, banana ya shase. Joe be the diva, it's a body by ya. The yana yere, banana ya shase. Who? Yeh ni abo, yeh ni abo. We are back from the short commercial break. Thanks for watching. If you just tuned in, you are watching Gin and Spice Show. And I'm here having a conversation with Tick, the legend himself. Okay, so Tick, if you had a chance to start all over again, what are some of the things you would have done different? Different. Maybe there are some there are some people I wouldn't have you know gotten myself involved with, you know. And sometimes um, yeah, maybe things I may have not handled it the way I, I thought I should have. So that would be those corrections, but apart from that, I'm good like this. So what what caused a long period of silence? The TikTok gap. Um, I, I just think that um, with every brand, like if you've done music for as long as I have, mm -hmm. I mean it's 25 years along the line. You can even get sick. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can have family issues. You know, people just think that when you're singing, that's it, like you said. But there's a lot, like you know, you can get sick. You can at a point you can just you can just feel you've had enough. You know, like enough of the whole thing you just want to break and sometimes i i per se th there was a point i felt you know what 
let me just chill, you know, like, let me just chill. I mean, I mean, there are so many things going on. There are so many people in different, you know, in different positions who are not making things work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. remember I told you at a point, certain people thought, okay, now they control certain things. Yeah. And because they had a relationship with my brand and perhaps maybe it didn't go well with them so they make sure certain things do not happen and you have to go around it and it's, it's too much stress you know so at a certain point i said you know you know all of these things let me just leave it down there you know because i got i got so much to do than just to waste my time on just something that that is not working and and so all coming together you know i just took a hike and that was just to refresh you know just to brainstorm and put everything together but nobody sings consistently for 25 years without taking a break even when people work at their firm they, they, they go for holidays <laughs> so you went for a long vacation can you count the years so maybe you say it's longer or it's just a brief <laughs> no, very long. so count it Okay. <laughs> okay, so wrapping up, can you give us a free spell of Lomina then Penemame? Lomina Petenge Kege. Lomina Petenge Kege. Come on! Everyone, everyone, everyone. Oh! Penemame. I want to show you something. If you want my money, any other Penemame. I say Penemame. I want to show you something. If you want my money, any other penny, mommy. Mm -mm. I say penny, mommy. You should know. You should know, baby. Only penny, mommy. Or the minya basa basa. Penny, mommy. See the eight penny, mommy. Or the eight penny, mommy. Or the eight penny, mommy. Penny, mommy. Penny, mommy. But I don't do that. that. <laughs> okay, so I'll take your final words to startups out there. Yeah, I just want to say that keep believing in yourself. Um, even when the going gets tough, that is when you need to, you know, really go tough. Like, go hard on it and then um, live your dream. Never give up. You know, people will always say you can't be what you want to do. I mean, people always give you wet words. They will affect your brains if you allow it and then you let yourself down. Believe in yourself. Believe in your ambitions. Lift your head up, even when you have to bow down, you know. I mean, just, just be everything, you know. Dream, dream, dream. You always dream till you're old, you know. I mean, dreams are forever with us, you know. So keep dreaming. You never know when it will come through or come to pass. So just be yourself and work hard, you know. And sometimes you also have to share how you feel. And with people, sometimes people can really help you to get back on your feet. Sometimes it's not necessary, but you just have to believe, you know, and reach out for excellence. Thanks for having you on the show. Welcome. Take. We shall meet again. We shall indeed meet again. <laughs> We're going to be working on the book. Eh? Yeah, 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 surely. <laughs> that was an interesting conversation with a young legend himself. <laughs> take to the world. And I enjoyed it. I hope you, my viewers, also did. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jane Inspire Show. Follow us across social media handles, Jane Inspire on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks to Abyss Makeover for my makeup, Genex Pizza, Twitter Junction Branch for hosting us to the noble signature for my accessories, and to my handsome young men behind the screens. God bless you all. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week.